Hey guys, how are you? I hope you guys are all doing good. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, this is going to be, okay, so I haven't made a video about addiction in a while, so I do want to talk to you guys about this, and, um, because there was a YouTuber and somebody on you now who recently came out and said that they had relapsed, so I just want to talk to you guys about this, um, so, I've, I'm gonna talk, because it's already out there, like, he already made it public, so that's the only reason I feel comfortable talking about it, otherwise, normally, I wouldn't. His name's, uh, The Vegan Cheetah, and he does You Now and YouTube, and I have to say, first of all, props to him for having the balls to go on the internet in front of, like, so many people and admit that you relapsed. That's, like, I don't know if I could do that personally. If I did, I don't know if I would be able to. I would be surprisingly enough like from the type of person that I am I would feel like people would like bash me way too hard and honestly that's kind of like one of the topics I wanted to talk to you guys about um I have uh, a lot of friends in recovery too and um I do there there is like addiction shamming just like there's um fat shamming or like things like that um I do know somebody who was bashed so hard for being an addict and being a junkie that they killed themselves. Um, so for somebody to be, for him to be able to like step up and tell this many people about it, that I feel like that's like, I, I don't know if I could ever do that. So props to you. But um, anybody who's like going through addiction right now or anybody who's like struggling, anything like that. And if you do relapse, like don't, like tr really don't beat yourself up because the fact that you were sober for a period before to even be able to relapse is something that not many people can do. Um, and if you've done it once, you can do it again. So, you know what I mean? You just kind of got to pick yourself up and start back start back where, you know, try to at least continue, up, continue where you left off. You know, go to meetings and stuff like that if that's what you choose to do. I personally don't like to go to meetings. I feel like they're too triggering for me. But, um, yeah, also, I've... I've uh, been in recovery for two years now and um, I still go to my program every day I don't really have much of a choice I kind of have to anyways but um I do enjoy it like and, and recovery like it's even two years in it's like not it's it I feel like honestly sometimes it gets harder like for example my family's in Florida right now with my son and I wanted to I'm on a maintenance program and I haven't given a dirty or haven't done anything wrong in a really, really long time. I've been doing great there. Everybody says it. And I go to put in bottles, a bottle request um, yesterday, and I was told today that I was denied. So I can't go see my family in Florida unless I want a guest dose down there. And my parents want nothing to do with that. They're like, no, we don't feel comfortable. Like, if something goes wrong, if the paperwork doesn't go through, then... And I know that that wouldn't happen because I've guest dosed it in other places before. But they don't know much about it, so that's not going to happen now. So it kind of sucks because, like, being on a maintenance program, you're kind of tied down like that. But, um, I mean, not everybody. I, maybe, like, uh, later on. I, I think because it was because, like, I, I was doing good, but my behavior was kind of, like, like, how I am on camera is how I am in real life. Like, if I have something to say, I say it. And that was my biggest problem at this place, like... I literally had to learn to keep my mouth shut in there and that's always been a really big problem with me I've definitely gotten my ass beat plenty of times for not knowing when to shut the fuck up so and I can admit that but um yeah so to the vegan tree I don't even know what his real name is um if you ever want to talk I'm totally here if you I think he said that he was um, addicted to opiates also which is really difficult like mentally it like fucks with you like so bad like it like you're like it screws with your head you know what I mean it's very difficult but um now too there's so many like 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 heroin is cut with so much stuff now like fentanyl not even just fentanyl car fe car fentanyl car fentanyl just like an elephant tranquilizer is in it um where I live uh there's like a I live like 25 minutes from Schenectady I don't know if you guys know where Schenectady is or I've heard of it but, um, people are, like, dying left and right and dropping, like, flies literally, like, from what these drugs are cut with. And it's really sad. Um, it's really sad to see. I recently had a, a friend, I, I don't want to mention any names, but 
she just got out of jail, um, was totally messed up, drove into a school bus, um, and then like ran from the scene and like all this stuff. And that's not even, that's not the type of person that she is, but addiction just like it screws with you so bad. Like you can't even make like proper decision making. You know what I mean? Like you've, and, and it's the weird thing about it is like when you're actively using, you really do feel like everything you're doing is right. Like it's almost like, it's almost like when you're sick and you need to get high, then it doesn't matter. It's like everything in your head is justified and then after you get high, all of that reality kind of sets in and you're like, what did I just do? You know what I mean? So it's a very, it's like, it's a hard addiction. I, it's, I, a lot, all drugs are a hard addiction and alcohol too. Um, even like food addictions and stuff like that, they're all difficult, but it's, it sucks because like the more that you do that and the more you live like that, the harder it gets to become sober because people start to use to like avoid things and just because it's easier that way or it's like easier to not get sober. So like the things you did yesterday for money that might have been screwed up um, after you get high, the reality sets in and then the next day it doesn't go away. It doesn't just go away. It doesn't go away when you get high. If anything, it kind of all you're not in that uh, panic state anymore of like I need to use right now so like you are high and then you can kinda like realize what you just did and then it's like a total buzzkill anyways so it's like I don't know addiction sucks I think um I've heard a lot about the Vivitrol shot and I think that f I think that if you like honestly okay I'm on methadone and I have to say if it's not like life or death if you I really only think people should be on methadone if they've tried inpatient, tried outpatient, tried Suboxone, tried all of it and nothing works. Like I feel like this is like, this should be the last resort, the last of the last of the last if you cannot do it on your own because honestly, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm 100% I'm sober because I'm, I am on methadone and it is a, a controlled substance and I'm not going to be fake with myself and say, it because I do, I take a medication every single day and it's... And I, I know that uh, the honest truth is it's it's prolonging my true sobriety, which is like when I am on nothing. And like right now, the way that I look at it is like I was an addict for so long and not like like a bad addict. So I look at it now like I'd rather take this medication every day and live sober until I know for a fact that I can do it because I never want to go through that again. I'd rather do this. And I try to look at it too, like, you know, if you have a, if you have a migraine, you take an aspirin. If you have diabetes, you take insulin. If you're an addict, maybe you take some methadone, like, or, but, I mean, I know it doesn't always work that way. And then you get the people all the time who say, oh, well, Narcan's free, but cancer patients can't get, to get their life saved for free. And just to, like, clear that up a little bit, um, everybody is entitled to a first response. When they are dying and the EMTs get called, everybody's entitled to a first response, whether it's CPR, whatever. Narcan is a first response medication and um, like the difference between that and like uh, cancer treatment is cancer treatment is, it's a treatment. It's like a long-term treatment. Narcan is like use it one time, bring them back to life. You know what I mean? Like, um, so, like, and I only wanted to talk about that real quick because I see posts, like, all over Facebook that have, like, that little picture and it says it on there. And it's kind of frustrating because I feel like the people who make those don't really know much about it. And they're kind of like, I mean, no, no sickness, no disease, no death is any worse than the other, in my opinion. I feel like people who are suffering are suffering. You know what I mean? Like, some, everybody's breaking point is different. Like, like, I might be able to handle more than, you know, like, Trevor can. Or, like, in certain situations. Like, our breaking points can be total. We could be going through the same exact thing, but me experiencing a couple minutes of it, and then I could have my breaking point. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's is different. Some people can handle more than others, but it doesn't mean that anybody's worse off or anything like that. And um, that's something to definitely think about, too. I feel like there's a lot of people who, you know, like talk shit about addicts and junkies and stuff like that but the the main thing is is I unless you've been in that situation you really have no idea how hard it is and how strong of a person you really have to be to be able to be an addict and come out of it and I have to say for myself I would I really would not trade it for anything I would if if 
I could go back in time and take it all away, I wouldn't do it. No way. I would do it all over again to get where I am right now. Because if I didn't go through everything that I went through, I wouldn't have my son. I wouldn't be the person that I am now. If people think I'm an asshole now, like, you should have met me back then. <laughs> like, because, no. But, um, like, I feel like over time, like, having this happen to me, like, I have... Um, more knowledge on things that I never would have had knowledge on before just things like that and and the best part about it is I can try I, I know that when it comes down to it nothing that I say or do can ever get another addict to get sober it's just it's ultimately it's always their decision but it makes me feel good to know that I can try like because I've been there and I can relate to people and I can try and it's nice because now I have, I do have friends, like, um, I had another friend who was sober for five years and they just recently relapsed and they messaged me the other day and they said, um, I'm thinking about getting back on methadone, please don't tell anybody and I'm not, obviously I'm not saying any names, but it makes me feel good that they can reach out to me and talk to me about this stuff and that people can trust me enough to, you know, do that and and as for anybody on here too if you ever need help finding any type of program you can um, message me on my Instagram and I will do anything that I can like in that moment to find you phone numbers or programs or anything like that if anybody needs help seriously because like this is like addiction is such a bad disease and heroin is such an epidemic right now hold on a second and it sucks it's tearing families apart and people are dying and you know there's a there's also like there's a big misconception that like with with heroin um like uh you know you'll get like hep C and die or you'll get like AIDS and die or things like that and the most common thing to kill a heroin addict is getting heroin that's really good like believe it or not like the hair like and, and that's the worst part is because as an addict and as a heroin addict you're seeking out the best drugs that you can find and that's what kills you and it's like so it's like you know you go to the store and you can get like uh like Hershey's candy or some shitty candy and then like you get Hershey's and that's what kills you so it's like you know what I mean it's like so it's like so easy to really hurt yourself as an addict because it's like what you're literally looking for will kill you like that's and it's it's like I've heard people say before, and I have myself have even said when I was actively using, oh, give me that shit that that guy overdosed on. I want that, like, because, like, you you know that if you're so mentally screwed up at the time that if you you know that if somebody, like, died on it or overdosed on it, that it's got to be good, you know what I mean? And it's just the whole, the whole process is difficult. So just remember that if you guys ever know an addict personally, um, instead of bashing them or treating them like crap or anything like that, just keep in mind that nobody, nobody lives perfect and on the outside, you'll never know what it's like in, unless you've been there. And I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. I seriously wouldn't. That's why, um, even with, uh, there was like a lot of speculation about Joy with the, on the videos I was making before um, that she was like addicted to opiates by like the way she was like scratching her nose and stuff all the time and honestly if that were the case that would explain it like I feel like that would explain like a lot of her behavior and a lot of the things that she does and then I feel like in that moment I would have to almost take back everything I ever said because I would get it at that point like I would get why she is the way that she is um but yeah, I just wanted to talk to you guys because, uh, and to the vegan cheetah, it's, I, I mean, it's, it's a good sign that he admitted that he relapsed because when you can admit it, that means that you're ready to try again. So that's really, I feel like that's a, that's a good thing he did it, um, that he was able to come out and say it. And, uh, oh, and I, you know who else I love? Peter Mon. I saw, I was watching his, I, you know, I didn't know that he worked in a treatment center. And I think that's so great, like, I, that's, I hope one day I can get a job in a treatment center if I ever can get back to work, but, um, yeah, that would be, like, or, that would be, like, my goal right there, or at least, like, volunteer, volunteer in schools and talk about stuff, like, things like that, be able to do something for anybody, because, I don't know, I don't know, I couldn't really do much for myself, but... 
if I could just help one person, then anything would be worth it. You know what I mean? Everything I went through, every bad thing, every arrest, every everything would have been worth it. You know what I mean? So if you guys want to hear any story times about uh, things like that, you guys can just let me know. I definitely have a ton. Um, and if anybody ever wants to like live stream and talk to, then we can totally do that. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that today. Like my update, I'm obviously I'm still sober um, and uh, still going to my program. And right now they kind of suck because they <laughs> refuse my bottles. But it's all right because recovery is not supposed to be easy. So that's just the way that it is. Even two years later, it's still difficult and. That's one of the biggest problems that I always had was instant gratification. So, like, of course, this morning when I was told I couldn't get him, I was so pissed off. I was ready to start killing people. But now I'm okay. I realize, you know, they're just looking out for my best interests. So it is what it is. Maybe they are. Maybe they're just our dicks. I don't know. But anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. And, again, if anybody's struggling or wants any information about treatment centers or anything like that, then you can message me on my Instagram and I'll do whatever I can to try and help you guys out. Alright, see you later. Bye.